Hey everyone, Kevin here from River City Graphics. Today I'm going to be showing you how to take a 2D Illustrator file and export that to After Effects and create a sweet 3D animation. So, let's get started. Alright, so the first thing that we need to do for this tutorial is to actually create something in Adobe Illustrator. So I've created this um, basically bullseye, just simple illustration right here. It's basically a stroked um, path and then I have a circle in the center for the bullseye. So what you need to do when you're creating objects um, and illustrations within Illustrator to export to After Effects is make sure that each of your elements um, that you're going to want to be able to select later on in After Effects is on its own separate layer. So if we go over to my layers panel here in Illustrator you'll see that both of my objects are on the same layer. You can see right here we have layer 1 and I have my path 1 and path 2 um, which one of them is my red ring and then the other one is the blue center. Now this isn't going to work because over in After Effects it's going to take both of these and keep them on the same layer so I'm going to be able to select all of it at once but not each individual piece. So in order to split that up I'm just going to select the blue center, hit Control X to cut it, create a new layer by clicking this create new layer button and then I'm going to hit Control shift v to paste in place. So now we have each element on its own separate layer and we'll be able to um, basically address each of those separately within After Effects. Um, so if you have a lot of different elements and a lot of different pieces to your objects um, and illustrations, uh, it'll take you some time to actually cut and put each of those on its own layer, but it'll definitely save you some time and frustration once you get to the After Effects side. So now that we have finally done that, I'm just going to save this file. We're going to take and go over to After Effects. So open that up and we'll create a new composition. This is going to be 1920 by 1080. All right, so the first thing to do is to import our footage or our uh, illustration file. So I'm just going to double click over here in my project window. I'm going to find that. It was called bullseye.ai. Click open and it's going to bring up this box right here. Now yours might be on footage um, and you can see that it'll try and merge all the layers together. What we want is composition so I'm going to take this import kind box and go down to composition and we'll just leave the footage dimensions to layer size. So this will give us basically a composition with our layers in it and it will give us the individual layers as well. So I'm just going to click OK. So now you can see that I have the bullseye and the bullseye layers right here. So now I can take and drag these two down into my timeline and you'll see that we have drug out basically what we had over in Illustrator right there onto our After Effects timeline. Now I'm going to scale this up and you'll see that it gets fuzzy. Um, this is one of those little things in After Effects. In order to fix this um, what you need to do is select each layer and then turn on the little sunshine icon right here to continuously rasterize that and you'll see that it becomes crisp again um, like you're used to seeing for illustrated or Illustrator files. Alright, so now that we've finally gotten all that done, um, it's time to actually uh, do some stuff here. So, in my previous tutorial I talked about how you can do the same effect using text. Now, there's a difference between text and Illustrator files um, within After Effects. Illustrator files you actually need to um, create a shape layer out of in order to take um, and create 3D extrusion on them. So, um, I'll show you what I mean here. You'll see if we just open this up, as a default we have Transform. Now I'm going to turn on 3D, and we need to turn off Ray Traced because this is what yours is going to look like. It'll probably say Classic 3D up here. So you'll see Transform and Material Options. Now you will be able to move this in 3D space, but you won't be able to get that extrusion like I showed in the preview. So you want to take your render and turn it to... Um, ray trace. Now if you didn't see what I did there, it's up in this top right corner just like we did in the text tutorial and we'll take our render and select ray trace 3D, click OK and you'll see now we get geometry options. Now in the text tutorial um, this was pretty much all we had to do and we had all the options, we had the extrusion and everything in there. Um, you'll see that those options are missing right now because we need to take and actually convert these illustrator files into something that um, After Effects can recognize. So I'm just going to go ahead and close all that up, turn on uh, 3D on this layer 2 as well, so both of these are now 3D layers. And what I'm going to do is select each of these individually, so I'm going to select layer 1, go to layer, and then down to create shapes from vector layer. Alright, now you'll see that it will take, turn off our AI file, you'll see that the eye is off, and it'll create this layer 1 outlines. So we need to do this for layer 2 as well, which is our blue center, so I'm going to say layer, create shapes from vector layer. 
Okay, so now we have basically two new layers and two layers that are turned off. Now, if you don't want to see these layers that are turned off, you can turn on your shy, which is basically this overall button right here, and then we can turn off the shy, which is the corresponding smaller icon on each layer, and you'll see that those disappear. And then in order to toggle them, you just turn on the master shy button. All right, so now what we're actually ready to do is start um, taking and extruding these like we did for our text layers. So I'm going to take and just hit enter, and I believe that this is this is the blue center, so I'm gonna hit enter and say blue center, just so that we don't get confused, and this one is the red ring of death. Just kidding, anyway. So moving on, um, what we're going to do is take and go to our geometry options. If you followed along with the text tutorial, um, in my basically one of my previous tutorials on this feature then you're going to be able to um, go probably on from here without actually watching this um, but if you haven't seen that video then what you're probably going to want to follow along still so I'm going to open up geometry options and what we're looking for is extrusion depth so I'm just going to take and turn that up to say probably about 75 probably just type that in and then I'm going to take the bevel um, depth and we'll turn that up to probably about five or so and then maybe we'll take and put on angular for the bevel style. Now you're not going to see anything um, different right now because we're looking at, at a straight on view. So we're also going to take and do this for our red ring. So I'm going to take the geometry options, turn this up to 75, and then we're going to turn bevel depth to 5 and bevel style to angular. All right. So maybe we'll turn the bevel hole down to 0. Um, just so that we don't get it encroaching on our center there. And we'll do the same thing for this one. Okay. So we can adjust these bevel depths later um, if you would like. Maybe we'll take and put it at like 3, just so that we don't get too close to the center there. All right, so now we can't still see what we're doing. Um, we need to actually add a camera so that we can orbit around these objects. So I'm going to go to Layer, New, Camera and just click OK with the default settings. And then I'm also going to create a light in our scene. Now we can take and rotate this around if we want to right now. I'm just going to grab my camera tool and you can see that we have our nice 3D object created out of that 2D Illustrator file, which is really sweet. Um, I'm really glad to see this feature finally come to After Effects. So what we need to do in order to actually see that better is to get some lights in here. So I'm going to go to Layer, New, and then Light. And I have the intensity at 178, um, the light type on spotlight, cone angle 97, cone feather 50. Um, some of these are defaults, some of these aren't. Um, the intensity I did turn up a little bit from default, and I also turned on cast shadows so that we can get some shadows within our circle cast from this um, blue center. So I'm going to click OK there, and now I can take and basically pull this off to the side like we did in our text tutorial, and we'll just aim the center point to the other side. Now this gives us some pretty um, harsh light coming from one side, so what I'm going to do is actually duplicate this light, so control D, and now you can see that we have a really bright light, and what I'm going to do is basically take, move this over, I might need to zoom out a tad in order to see this, try and get the light in the same spot on the other side, and then we'll shine this in from there. Now we probably need to move it back in space a little bit because it's still a little bit big, um, but for the purposes of this tutorial it's probably okay. So now you can see that we have basically a well-lit object from both sides. All right. So now what we can do is start tweaking everything else that we want to do. Um, basically, we can take these and hit R on them, and if you have both of them selected hit R, it's going to adjust both of the rotations at the same time. So now we can take our Y rotation. You can see our object here. It's actually turning out pretty cool. So that's pretty sweet. Um, you can take and adjust your options um, so that you can change how this center object is affected by the outer object by changing around shadows and things like that. So we can take our blue center, open it up. I'm going to close up the transform and we're going to look for material options. And now we can take and see cast shadows. Um, we can basically turn that on so that it will cast shadows on the inside there um, if we want that. 
can turn it back off um, in order to not have that. You can turn on accepts lights, um, accepts shadows, things like that in order to really play around with how that center object is going to look because a lot of times that can somehow get darked out because this other ring is basically casting a shadow on it. So you want to make sure that um, if this is for a logo or if this is for something where you need to see that center object, then you can play around with these material options um, to really pop out that center um, from the darkness and actually see it pretty well. So, um, as far as the tutorial goes, I think that's probably about it. Um, the main difference was actually needing to convert those layers to shape layers themselves. Um, you can get some really intricate stuff going on here. I basically just made the bullseye and the center, um, so it doesn't really show <clears throat> too much what you can actually do with this because you can create some really intricate illustrations, and I wasn't going to go into that because it would take forever to take and convert all those and animate them and get the lighting right and everything on that but what you can do with this is really get some intricate illustrations import those and then do some really cool animations with an After Effects and so far um, from what I've seen it seems like After Effects can handle this pretty well um, on my computer so it seems like it wouldn't take you too much rendering power in order to get these things to work right so you can see that we have a pretty cool little animation going on here you can take and still move each of these objects around so if we wanted to take and move this out you can see that we can have it like come flying in sticks in the center and then maybe this spins around and all kinds of stuff so really the sandbox is opened up for you guys now that I've shown you this technique so hope you enjoy this um, don't forget to subscribe rate and comment I do have a new tutorial coming out every week so thanks for watching and I will see you next week